for a witness. He told that body, amen, and all them apostles, he told them, he gave them great revelation, he gave them the word of God, but he told them to go down to Jerusalem and tarry down there until the Holy Ghost comes. That's what he was saying. And even though they preached and healed the sick and everything, they still needed it. Brother Johnny, they still needed to go down to Jerusalem and wait for the power of God. And I believe that's what's the matter with the law of the church now. There's the people's repented, they've made a start, but they've not went down and waited for the power. They're not waiting for not seeking for the power. Maybe it's we're not looking for it no more. Maybe we're satisfied. You know, sometimes we get like we go to a restaurant, you know, and, and I don't know about you, I worked on the road a lot of years and you know, I don't care about restaurants. It's the same. They are all the same to me. I just seem like I can't really find what I want if I go out somewhere to eat. You know, it's just like it's the same old thing. But I'll tell you what, there are some times when you can really get a good meal and it'll fill you up. And that's why we need to serve the Lord. We need to seek God for His Word, for His meat that'll come in and it'll satisfy our soul. You can't live on the suckers and popsicles and candy bars. Amen. A lot of folks do. Some people never eat. They just eat sweet stuff and drink pop and they just go on and they're unhealthy. But you know what? The ones that wait up on the Lord, he said, we'd renew our strength. Amen. I want to I want to renew my strength in the Lord. And I want to listen what the Spirit saith unto the church. I, I tell you what, God speaks in many ways. Amen. And he reveals himself to us in many ways, thank God. But we got to listen for him. we got to be in a place. You know, the Bible said in every house there's vessels, all kind of vessels. But some to honor and some to dishonor. But I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to be something that if the Lord wants to use me, I want to be in a place. Amen. If you ever go to somebody's house and, and, you, and you get in the cabinet to get you a, a cup, you always look for the one that's the cleanest or the one that's the shiniest. Amen. Sometimes you go to a restaurant. And you go through them plates there and you want to make sure that you get a clean one. Amen. That's what the Lord, don't you think that's what the Lord's looking for when He's looking at us, when He's got something to do? Don't you think He's looking for somebody that's worthy, somebody that's clean? Amen. Somebody that's submissive to Him, waiting upon Him. Thank God. If we wait upon the Lord, He said we'll renew our strength. Amen. God's good tonight, isn't He? Amen. We'd like to read a little bit tonight. And starting off in the book of Genesis, chapter 17. With the help of the Lord. And maybe I'll just do a little teaching tonight, a little reading. The Lord laid this up on my heart. And there's a whole lot of it. So when I start condensing it down, that's when we start losing stuff. But I just need the Lord to help me to, to bring it down. Sometimes we get in a big rush and we run through it too fast and we miss out on it. We don't really let people hear what I'm saying. Say, it feels good, Brother Maynard. I'll tell you what, when you're running around in circles and praising God, it feels good. But you know, God wants us to instruct people and tell them what we're talking about. Amen. It don't do no good if we if the other people don't understand us. Amen. It's just like speaking in tongues. It wouldn't do me no good to run around church speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, because nobody would understand what I was talking about, would they? Amen. All right. Chapter 17. And we've taught on this a lot. If you got a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, somebody got one here, we need to read with us. Amen. But he said, and when Abram, anybody know Abram? Anybody know Abram? How come I'm calling him Abram? How come I'm calling him Abram? Huh? That's, what, that's good, brother. But that's because it says. That's what it says. Well, his name was Abram. But God changed his name. Amen. Sometimes God changed our name too. If you know Peter, he changed Peter's name. Remember? He called him the stone. Amen. He called, changed Paul's name from, from Saul to Paul. And you know what? In reality, we our name's been changed too. Amen. I'm not the Glenn Jenkins that I used to be when I used to run up down the road and do all the things. And people don't know. I'm glad that I've lived long enough that people really don't, a lot of people don't remember me like that. Amen. My wife, she tells me things that sometimes she did when she was young. And I told her, I said, you know, honey, I said, I could never ever picture you doing that or being like that. Or some of these brothers get up and talk about things they've done or sisters, you know, and I look at them and I just, I know them now. I've known them for years and, and live, they've lived for God. And I can't, 
I can imagine them doing some of the things that they said that they used to do. You know why? Because God has given us a new name. He's changed us. Amen. Just like he did Abraham. But he said when Abram was 90 years old, he was almost as old as Brother Don. Amen. Anybody that old in here? Now he's just getting ready to do a work now. People have said, how many believe God can do things? You know, you can be young or old, he can still work. All right. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou what? Perfect. perfect. Amen. People say, oh, you can't be perfect. You can do everything God told you to do. We're supposed to strive for that. That's what caused man to fall. Man was perfect in the garden until he yielded to sin and he gave up his right then. And he said, and God told him, he said, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And I'll tell you what, Abraham, has, his descendants has filled the earth. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of what? Amen. Many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called what? Abraham. How many knows what Abraham means? Does anybody know what Abraham means? Well, we'll read it. See here what it says? He said, thy name shall be Abraham. Here's why. For father, for a father of many nations have I made thee. It meant he was the father of many nations. This man was 90 years old, never had no children, never had no seed, but yet God said, I'm going to change your name to the father of many nations. Now, you know what? He, no doubt he started going by that name. He started telling people that that was his name. Do you imagine the circles of people when they got behind his back, that old man says he's the father of many nations? He ain't even got no children. He's too old to have seed. He couldn't have no child. You know, that's the way people are. But you know what? That's what God told him. And he changed his name. When God changes your name, you got to walk by faith then. You can't go by your feelings. You can't go by what other people say. And most of the time, you ain't going to find anybody that goes along with you. You're just going to have to walk by faith. Faith, the Bible said, is the substance of things hoped for. It's evidence of things that's not seen. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. But you know, even as we're going to read here, Abraham laughed when he first God told him. He got down on his face before God. He laughed. He said, how in the world are an old man? How, how could I have seed? But you know, God was saying, hey, I can do a lot of things you don't think. He was 99. Huh? 99. Well, when the child was born here, he was 9. 90, 90 years old. 99. I'm sorry. It does say 99. I'm sorry. It does say Yeah, this was 10 years later, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the first verse, it says 90, and it goes down to 99. The first verse is 90 and 9. 90 and 9. Now, let's talk about the first verse. The first line says, And when Abram was 90 years old, and 9. There we go, 99. All right. <laughs> Help me, now. All right. Verse 5, he said, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make, listen to this, nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. That was something, wasn't it? And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give thee, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abram, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Now listen, this is where I want to go. This is my covenant which ye shall keep. 
between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and thee. Now, I don't have to go in to talk about circumcision because everybody knows what I'm talking about. It's a natural thing now, but I'm going to tell you something. Back then, nobody was like that. There wasn't nobody on earth like that. Nobody had that, that mark on their body that God separated Abraham and he blessed him and he said, and this is going to be a mark between me and you that you're going to be, cir that you're going to be circumcised and you, this is going to be a covenant between me and you and between all you see. And when it all started, as we go on here and read, but God said this was a sign. And he said, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for how long? For an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man, child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. He hath broken my covenant. That's pretty plain, isn't it? And God said unto Abraham, Now see Sarah, her name wasn't Sarah, it was Sarah. Sarah, if I'm saying that right. God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name, shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of what? Nations. And kings of people shall be of her. So now this woman that's 90 years old, that she's not had no children, and now God's telling her that you're going to have a son. And all this promise that you've been waiting on, it's all going to come from you too. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, then he goes on and he talks about Ishmael. He wants God to change it over the word Ishmael. But I'm, I'm wanting to talk to you here about the circumcision tonight. Amen. And how that this was a sign, it was a covenant that God made with Abraham. And when Abraham's son, Isaac, was eight days old, he was circumcised. And when his sons that was born, even Ishmael, all of them that was born in his house, they all were circumcised. And this was handed down from generation to generation. It was saying, and even Christ, our Lord, he was circumcised. He presented an offering, amen, when he went, when they went before uh, the, the priest when he was born. This is something that all Jewish boys, they, they all did. And it was a sign, amen. That's how they knew that they was different from anybody else. Out of all the men, out of all the people in all the world, out of all nations, thank God this one nation was the only one that had this circumcision. They was different. Amen. Can you see what I'm talking about tonight? Amen. They made these different. Thank God. God did this for a purpose. Thank God. And you know what? He made He made them different from anybody. Thank God. Don't you believe that God's people is different from anybody else? Amen. But as time went on, as we can read, thank God, as time went on, every generation there was circumcision brought into it. And even as the time when Jesus Jesus, I'm in the, I believe in the eighth chapter of John, he was talking about how he said, if it, that you, you know, if you follow God or if you do what he says, that you're the son and set you free, that you'd be free. And they said, well, we're Abraham's sons and we've never been in bondage to anybody. How sayest thou, you know, we'd be made free. But he was went on to show and thank God that even though they was, they was Jews, even though they were circumcised, they wasn't right with God. Their heart wasn't right. 
And in the fourth chapter of the book of Jeremiah, we can read, thank God, he said, break up your foul of ground and circumcise the foreskin of your heart, thank God. God always wanted the inward part of man, thank God. He always wanted a different, thank God. That's just like we talked about tonight, about being a different person, about being different. The Jews, thank God, just like the religious world, no doubt, amen, Abraham was a good man. Maybe there was a lot of good ones, but there's a lot of bad ones too. But a lot of them justified themselves just because they took part in the circumcision. Just like today, a lot of folks go to church somewhere and they say, I'm a Christian because I've been baptized. Amen. Some of them might have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or whatever way. That's a sign, thank God, that I'm a Christian. But you know what? If they don't go on and live right, then the baptism don't do them no good. Amen. And it's just like the circumcision. It wasn't the circumcision. Thank God, if they went on and lived how they wanted to live and they still lived in sin, the circumcision Circumcision was made up circumcision, thank God, because their heart wasn't right with God. Even though they was different from any other people, amen, just like there's a lot of people, amen, they'll put their money in the church, but they won't come to church. There's people, thank God, that'll carry their Bible under their arm every day, every Sunday, and they'll go to church and they'll say, I'm a believer, I'm a born again Christian, but when they go out on their job, they live, they lie, and they cheat, and they steal, and they do all these things, thank God. And the ungodly do, but yet they'll say, I'm a child of the king. And it's like these Jews did here. Hey, God, that's what God was trying to show at this circumcision, thank God. That's what it was a type of, thank God. God used that in the beginning to separate God's people from everybody else. Now, we have to do that today. Some people say you do. But in the 15th chapter of Acts, that was a decision that they come up against. They said that some of them, amen, that was wanting to tell the people that they had to be circumcised, they had to keep the law of Moses, and they kept them in bondage. Amen. There was confusion in the church, and they came together for to consider the matter, but they said they never gave no such commandment. Amen. When the Lord came, He fulfilled all that thing. He done away with the flesh. The Bible said the veil was rent from the top to the bottom in the temple. Thank God when Christ came in the flesh, He did away with the carnal commandment and things like that. Thank God. But now we have, the Bible says in Romans, I believe it's 2 and 28. Amen. He said, it's not a Jew that is one outwardly of the circumcision of the flesh, but it's one inwardly of the circumcision of the heart. That's what makes a Jew tonight. Amen. The brother was talking this morning. Amen. About how we are spiritual Jews because we come through the tribe of Judah. And you'd say, well, how do you get that? Well, if you follow the lineage of Jesus, amen, all the way down through the Bible, he came, the Bible said he was the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came through through this lineage all the way down through the Bible. How many believe that? Yeah. He was, even though he was God manifested in the flesh, he was still Abraham's son. Amen. He was still David's son because he was born of the flesh. He came to redeem those that was in the flesh. Thank God. And just like me and you, God has come to redeem us. But I tell you what, we can say we're Christian. We say we're Christian. But if our heart ain't right, we're not Christian. Amen. You can say, well, I put my tithes in every week. But then I live right, then the tithes ain't going to do you no good. But what I'm trying to say, just like these Jews, they said they justified themselves because let's, let's just go there. Let's just read. I want to go to 8 chapter St. John. 8 chapter St. John. They justified themselves by this. In other words, if they was of the circumcision, they was Abraham's sons, no matter what. All of them was Jews. You know what? The same Jews, they were circumcised that threw Jeremiah down in prison. The same Jews that were circumcised that had the same circumcision, they were the ones that could help deliver Jesus to the Jews, thank God, to be crucified. It was a religious sect, Sister Marlene. They all, they all took part in it. Just like today, there's all kinds of churches. There's all kinds of peoples. There's all kinds of names. And everybody says we're all serving the same God. But how can we serve the same God and all of us be different be called by something else? How can I sit on this side of the church and live a holy life? Amen. And try my best to live right. And Brother Johnny's on the other side and just live like the devil and lie and everything else. And then both of us to go out and tell people we're Christians. Thank God. Now how foolish is that? 
But Brother John, I'm using him as an example. He knows I am. And he can say, but I go to church every Sunday. Amen. I, I put my money in the church all the time. But then things won't justify you, children. Amen. If our heart ain't right, if we don't treat other people right, then it ain't going to do us no good. Amen. We can say we're all whatever we want. And know the Bible said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. There's a lot of people says, I believe, but what do they believe? And Jesus said, He, he said, Except you believe me as the scripture has said, Amen. It ain't going to do you any good. You got to believe it the way the scripture is. I got I to believe that He was the Son of God. God manifested in the flesh. And if I believe something else, I'm believing in another God. I'm believing in another religion. Amen. I, I don't care what I belong to. You know what? There's people that their faith is some strong in some of their religions. And like some of the monks out there I've heard now through the years where they pour gasoline on themselves and set themselves on fire and burn themselves up, thank God, being deceived that they think they'd have a better place to go to. A lot of these people, they got these terrorists uh, that belong to a religious sect. They're going across the nation and trying to kill people, uh, even kill women and children, all these things. They're doing it all in the name of religion, thank God. And then people say, yeah, they're a good man of God, good women of God, I'll tell you what, but they're not, children. If they don't live what they say they got, then they're not serving the God I am. Eight chapter of St. John. You know, people wants to proselyte people. You know, people, I don't go out and try to gather people from other churches. I just preach the word. I don't want people to follow me. I want them to follow what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Because I'll tell you what, when I'm gone, the Bible's still going to be here. I'm gone. Amen. Rub down when you're gone. This little Bible's still going to be here. Everything we stood for, it's going to be here. Our prayers are still going to be before the Lord. But it's still yet. we got to go by this right here. But I, I just want you to think about something tonight. And I'm going to tell you right this right in the oneness movement. Amen. The biggest thing, thank God, that you hear about is the people getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what they want. They they go out on the streets and they get people out of parks. They get, go out and just grab people and want them to get baptized. It don't make any difference if they're living right or not. They just want to get them somewhere. And get them in, thank God, so they can get up in their church and say, We baptized 50 people in the church. I had a boy tell me one time, We baptized 100 people. I said, Honey, I said, That's wonderful. I said, But where are they at now? Are they, are they still? Well, he said, They kind of scattered. But you know what? They're doing it for their own selves. They, they want it. They want it, the glory out of it. They want people to get baptized. I don't care if they're living right. I don't want to baptize somebody just to be baptized them. Thank God, I want to baptize them because God. God said that was a way to get your sins remitted. But if the heart ain't right, the sins will never be made right. He said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and God will send Jesus Christ which before was preaching to you. That's when the Holy Ghost is going to come. And then a lot of people said they got the Holy Ghost, but you can't keep living in sin and say you have the promise. Amen. All right, eight chapter. Verse 41. Jesus, ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We be not born to fornication. We had one father, even God. Ain't that what everybody says? God's our father. This is Jesus talking. He said, He do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, and neither came I myself, but he sent me. In other words, if, if you if you would really love God, you would love me, right? And he said, Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You can't hear. A lot of people, they don't hear the word of God. They don't hear God. Amen. But he said, and ye, this is what he said, ye are of your father the who? Yeah. Well, people get mad if you told them that, wouldn't you? Yeah. But you know what? If I'm, if, I'm little, if I'm doing the works of the devil, then my father is the devil, right? Yeah. 
You know, we talk about being born again. The Bible said not being born of corruptible seed, but being born by the undefiled. Being born of God. Being born of God's seed. Being born of His Word. You know, the seed, the Bible said in 8 chapter Luke, He said the seed is the Word of God. And the seed, when it's planted in us, and it begins to grow, thank God, that's when we can be born again. That's when a change starts. It takes over in your life. We start out by repenting of our sins. We, we go on and get baptized for the remission of our sins. We tarry for the gift of the Holy Ghost and power to go on and do the work of God. And there's a lot of folks that say, are going to church somewhere. A lot of folks say they, they live like the world. They, they don't change. I know that I'll tell you a lot of people's honest in this too, Brother Johnny. I've seen this down through the years. I've worked with people and talked to people. And I've watched them. And they'd say, hey, Brother Glenn, I got to church last night. And I'd say, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, man, that's wonderful. And you know what? I'd watch them. I'd watch them. You know what? But they'd go somewhere where they never taught about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hey Amen. They never taught them that they had to have the Holy Ghost. And they never taught them about how they should live or where they should go. And I'd watch them keep doing those things, being ignorant to it. Hey Amen. And I'd watch the old man move right back in their house. Hey Amen. He'd sneak right back in. And after a while, that person will be worse off than he was when he made a star. Because the old devil moved back into his house and he was convinced he was a Christian. He was convinced that all the things that he was doing and the way he was living, he was okay. But did you see how the devil to see people like that. Amen. When God comes in, there's going to be a change in your life. Now listen. Verse 44. And ye are of your father, the devil. And the less of your father, ye will do. That's how you know if it's the devil or not. And he said, and he was a murderer from the beginning. Can I be a Christian? Does that be a murderer? No. Who would be my father if I'm a murderer? The devil, wouldn't he? Amen. And he abode not in the truth from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. What happened? Where was he first seen at? In the Garden of Eden. Amen. Cain, that old spirit moved up on Cain and, and he was jealous and he killed his own brother. Amen. And he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He's a father of a liar. He's the, one in, he's the one that invented it. You make up a lie. You know what? When I was a sinner, I used to tell stories all the time. Tell jokes and, and all that stuff. But I had to give that stuff up, Brother Maynard. Because I've told so many lies when I was a sinner. That I, when I come to the Lord, I didn't know if there's the truth or not. I thought I'd added so much stuff to him and, and changed him around, Brother John. And even now, there's things I remember back years ago, but I'm going to say nothing about it because I don't know if it's true or not. Amen. I want to know what I'm saying and the Lord give it to me. I don't want to take a guess because I have told things and then later on I'd be thinking, well, did that really happen that way? Is that the way it really happened? And I'll be troubled in my mind. I'd have to, have to ask God to forgive me. But that's just what I'm saying. Can't you see how the devil, he just gets in your mind? Amen. And that's where that's where the separation is. We need to be a new creature. We need to have a new circumcision. All right. 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. That's what Jesus said. Today is the same way you tell people the truth. There's people, no doubt, right on the radio, they get mad at me for what I'm saying right now. But I'm reading it right out of the book. Amen. And just like Jesus, he said he, he spoke the words of his Father, and they hated him because of it. He did the works of his Father. He healed the sick. He opened the eyes of the blind. And he even asked him one time when he said, I, my Father, one, they picked up stones to stone him. And they said, for which of these good works do you stone me? And he said, not for the good works that you do, but because you being a man, making yourself God. He told him he was God. Amen. Manifested in the flesh. Thank God. Now listen, here's the thing. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And the thing about it is, let's look at this real hard. Let's look at ourselves. What Jesus was saying, can you find any sin in my life? Can you convince me that I have sin in my life? He's talking about himself. Jesus was saying that. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe these words. They told me he's out the devil and everything. But now he's telling me, he said, he, can, he said, read this scripture again. Convince it. Which of you convinceth me of sin? 
In other words, is there any sin in my life? Today, if they got a few listen to somebody, you ought to look at their life they're living. Hey, Amen. Not a high they can jump or how good they can sing or how a bunch they can beat on a drum. Thank God. But I'll tell you what, it's the life that they live. It's how they, st- they stop and walk. Amen. And if I say the truth, uh, why, do you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Right? And he therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hath a devil? You know, that's something to think about. That's pretty close to blasphemy, ain't it? Call the spirit a devil. Jesus answered, I am not a devil, but I honor my Father, and ye do dishonor me. I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest that if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. He said, they said, Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? And Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me, of whom ye say that he is your God. See, everybody says that God's your God. And he said, But ye have not known me him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I should be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. How in the world did they, see, did they see Jesus' day? Remember over there when he said through him all nations of the earth is going to be blessed? When God gave him that promise and that covenant of circumcision, he told him, you're going to come down through my loins. You're going to come down. That is God's going to bless him. But listen to what he said. And Abraham, he rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was what? I am. If you get a third chapter of Exodus, when Moses said, told the God, he said, When I go down to the children of Israel, who am I going to tell sin? And they said, they said, you, you just tell them I am sent you. He said, that, he said, I am that I am. Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel that I am. That's what he was called. He is the great I am, the mighty God. He was telling them who he was. He said, I am, thy God. And he said, And they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. That's just what I'm saying. People, they say they love God, but if they don't love the Word, they don't love God. And Jesus said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But people can go to church, and they can be of of the crowd, but they don't keep the commandments, and they don't love God. That's what the Scripture says. I told a young girl that one time. She said, I love God. And I said, No, sis, you don't. I said, the Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And she started crying. She said, well, don't tell me I don't love God because I do love God. Honey, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. we got to go to what the Scripture says. Amen. People don't want to hear that, but it, it's really the truth. Now go with me tonight to Galatians chapter 6. When Apostle Paul... When he was on the earth, his biggest fight was with his Jewish brother. Everywhere he went, he, he fought with the, the Jewish sect. Because they claimed the promises of God, and they was God's chosen people, and they was. But the thing about it is, when they came, and when Jesus came forth of them, thank God, they rejected him. His Bible said he came to his own, and, they, and his own received him not. He said he was in the world, and the world was made by him, but they rejected him. One place he said, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. But if another would come in his own name, 
You receive him. People can come in other names. They say, well, I'm a Pentecostal or I'm a Methodist or I'm a Catholic or some any religion, thank God. But all them names, they come from men, thank yeah. God. But I'll tell you what, hey, we need to come in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because he tells us in the book of Acts, he said, there's not another name under heaven whereby we must be saved than by the name of Jesus Christ. Right. I know one time we had an apostolic on the door, thank God, but I tell you what, God dealt with me for four years about that. And I rise and I said it in every way I could find. But I said, it's man-made and it came right out of the Catholic Church. Just like the Trinity, we preach against the Trinity doctrine, thank God. Amen. Because it came out of the Catholic Church. Why, why would I want the old Catholic name stuck up on the door? Amen. When we come out of it, brother, we got to come out. We can't stay in there. That's what he said. Come out of my people and be separate. That's not the unclean thing. And I'll receive you unto myself. If you see that old Catholic Church back here, and I tell you what, I hate to just see what happened, but the truth is true. I know when I worked, I mean, we used to joke about it. How they figured they could go out and get drunk on, on one night, the next day they could go to church and just ask forgiveness. Like, uh, that's the same thing that come out of paganism. That's what the pagans did. Amen. They went in and they used that, that time that they spent with their priests, and the priests would figure out all about them. Thank God. And a lot of times they blackmailed them because they had all that information on them. That's where things go on, even in politics and everything. People can do everything. Get on there. The politicians get on there and they lie. This one will lie on that one. That will lie on that one. And then both of them will get up and they'll say, praise God. And people will say, amen. The Bible said they love to have it so. He said the prophets prophesy falsely. The priests bear rule by their means and the people love to have it so. It's a religious world today. Don't you know this is a sect that God that killed Jesus? Amen. And I don't want to be a part of that sect. I want to come out and be separate tonight. Alright. We're still talking a little bit about circumcision here. Because this was the main thing. They wanted them. And you read the 15th chapter of Acts. And put this in your study. And it tells all about this. Amen. How they tried to bring it into the church. Amen. Verse 12. 6 of verse 12. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. There's people that wants to. Well, you know, we've, I've heard people say, well, you know, I saved three people in church last night. Yeah. I ain't never saved nobody. Yeah. I can't save nobody. Yeah. But people want to say, I did this, I did that, I did the other. Yeah. Preachers want to say, oh, we, we baptized this many. Amen. But how many of us living right? Yeah. Amen. How many of us really confess, making a confession of faith? Amen. That's what I'm saying today. People can chew bubble gum, laugh, come down the aisle, go to the altar. Amen. That's why the young people, amen, if one God might be dealing with one of them, but then all of them will go to the altar and thank God they're their friends. They, they don't want they're getting baptized for. Amen. Why would we baptize them if they don't understand what they're doing for? I can't find where they did in here. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. And uh, that's talking about the Jewish sect back there. In other words, they want to, they want everybody to get circumcised. They want to, to get you circumcised. Amen. That's the way people are today. People want you to belong, but they don't want you to do it. The right way they want you just to belong. He said, and he said, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. In other words, they, they didn't, back then, they wanted people to be circumcised because if they looked around with them, they wanted to be able to say, well, you know, this guy, he's been circumcised like we are. And you say, well, really did that go on? Remember when Peter, remember what he done? Amen. He did. He wouldn't go in among the Gentiles. Amen. He fought that. He's all out. We found him in place in the book of Galatians here where the, he dealt with that word even Paul would be in the face. Because he'd be one way with the Gentiles. When he got to the Jews, he'd kind of separate from the Gentiles. And he showed him that it was respect to persons. But in that day, all the Jews say that and said, We've all been circumcised. We all want to hang together. Amen. That's the way some people are. This group that brought, they all want you to be in their group. And the only way you can be in their group. Is if you do it their way, but I don't want to do it their way. I want to do it God's way. The only reason I want them to get circumcised is so they wouldn't be persecuted. He said, Neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. See what Paul's saying? 
Everybody back in that day said everybody's wanting you to be circumcised, but even the ones that's been circumcised, they don't live right. That's what he said, isn't it? But but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. People want you to glory in flesh. You know what? People today, they want people to go to belong to church. They do. But they want you, they want you to go to their church and live the way they do. And don't dress any different now, don't act any different now, because if you do, it'll cause persecution for them. In other words, the first thing you do, people that never even mention to you about church or anything, and you go somewhere and you tell them, I repented of my sins and I'm getting ready to get baptized, and people come out of the woodwork trying to tell you how to get baptized and tell you how to live. But you know what? What's good but what the scripture said? Not but what people say. A lot of times the people that's wanting to change, you look at their life. They don't live the life themselves. A lot of preachers, amen, you see them running around here half naked, amen, running up down the street, and they're involved in everything. They go, how, how can I justify that? Okay. I'll tell you what. If some of you see one of these brothers here dressing out godly, I'll tell you what, somebody will tell on you. I guarantee it, somebody will tell on you. For they neither, they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they make glory in your flesh. For God forbid that I should glory save the cross of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a what? A new creature. That is what makes the difference, is the new creature. Amen. To be in a new creature with the inside. It don't make no difference for what church you go to. You know, a lot of times I see it the obituaries. And, and when you read the obituary, they'll say, well, they was of this religion or they was of that religion. That don't mean nothing. That's just something on there. Thank God to make people feel better. Yeah. And they, they made some kind of confession. Amen. I've seen people, thank God, get on Facebook and somebody wrote out a testimony about how they believed in the Lord and everything. And other people would copy and paste that and they'd say, this is the way I feel. Amen. But their hearts wouldn't be right. They'd still be living the same old way. You got people who come on there and say, well, we're praying for you. And you know what kind of life they're living. Amen. I'll tell you what, it, it's, a, it's a serious thing. Thank God to call yourself a child. God tonight. And I know I don't want you to think about something tonight. Maybe this is where I was going. We grew up, I did, learning the one God way. I learned. I was taught it as a child. I learned that Jesus Christ was God. And I grew, I grew up and I learned that. So when I come to the Lord, God still had to reveal Himself to me. But I was, I was ahead because I had learned about it. When I grew up, that's all we heard, Brother Johnny. We heard, get baptized, get the Holy Ghost. Get baptized, get the Holy Ghost. That's what we heard. We heard God in. And that's wonderful. But a lot of the other one that's churches around, they heard the same thing. They heard the one getting baptized, get the Holy Ghost. Get the Holy Ghost, get baptized. And today, thousands and thousands of people, even millions, have come together under that one heading and they say, we've been baptized, amen, and we've got the Holy Ghost, amen. But the thing about this, how do they live after that? Isn't it something that they don't have the knowledge of who want the oneness of God? They don't know anything but that beginning scriptures, amen, but when it comes to the book of Revelation and all the other the other doctrines, if they go right back to the Trinity to, to teachings out of the Catholic movement, and they're teaching the same doctrine they are, in other words, they were teaching oneness, or teaching baptism, or teaching the Holy Ghost, and then after they teach that, then they go right back and start teaching what the rest of the world is teaching, amen, that tells me, my God, that people don't really have the revelation, they just got it, they're just like the Jews, they got the circumcision, amen, but unless the heart is changed, unless it's a new creature, then it will do no good. I know this might be a little bit different tonight, but I just you just think about it. you just think about it. What's on the door ain't gonna save you. You know, people they depend on their parents. Kids won't live right because they figure mommy and daddy's praying for me, but mommy and daddy can't save you. You're, as much as I love my children, my grandchildren, I can't save none of them. 
I can preach to them, but they need to receive the Lord theirself. Amen. They have to do it themselves. If you're going to make it tonight, you're going to have to get ready tonight. The Bible said, Apostle Peter said, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Amen. There's a generation, amen, the Bible says, clean in their own eyes, but they're not yet washed with their filthiness. We still got to live right. We got to have a change heart. I don't care where people go to church. Amen. I don't care what denomination they are. When you first have an encounter with Jesus Christ, there'll be a change in your life. There'll be a, there'll be a sign there. Amen. You might not understand all the scriptures. Amen. You might not understand all the revelations, Sister Darlene, but there will be a change there. Amen. When I was a young child, there was a lot of denominational churches that was around me. Amen. But when and it meant something to us when we was growing up. When somebody said they got in church or they give their heart to God. I don't care where they went to church. There was a change in their life. Amen. They, they, so they were saved. And, and God, and I believe God did bring them to repentance, Brother Johnny. But amen, as times went on, so much stuff's got into the church and so much confusion's got in now. It's all about playing basketball and entertainment and all that stuff. They brought it all into the church and people are following that stuff now. And when you follow all that, that is not going to give us deliverance from sin. We got to, we got to follow what's going to deliver us from sin. We got to listen for God's voice. He said, "Listen, what the Spirit saith unto the church." God will speak to you tonight if you've got a heart and you're willing to listen. God will talk to you. Amen. Don't let no other body stand in your way. Don't let other people stand in your way. Make your calling and election sure before God. Amen. That's what God wants us to do. At one time, we had to depend upon a priest. We had to have a priest to go in and offer a sacrifice for us. But now we've got the one that offered up the sacrifice. It's forever, thank God. And once we've been baptized in that name, that makes us acceptable unto that sacrifice. Thank God. He said, now we can enter boldly into the throne by His blood. Thank God. By the blood of Jesus. We have that atonement. Thank God. We can go in and present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, but what if you ain't holy? Ain't going to be no good, is it? And you say, well, I'm not holy. I don't know how to get holy. Just one day at a time. You start working on it. Don't be discouraged about it. Amen. But if you find something in your life you know it ain't right, you need to start praying about it right then. You need to start working on it right then. And when God gives you that, then He'll give you something else. And then you work on that till you get that. And when God takes away that old stony heart of flesh of there, then He'll put His Spirit within you. But you've got to get that old stony heart out of there first. That's what the new Spirit's for. That's the changes. That's what makes us a new creature. Amen. It's not the outward circumcision of the flesh. Amen. You go to church, carry your Bible. Amen. But you've got to have a change in your heart. Change your heart tonight. Change about how you feel about people. Amen. When you're thinking about other people, when you're talking about other people, are you talking favorable things about them? Are you talking things, thank God, that hurts people? Amen. We shouldn't even think things that discourage. We should love one another. Love our enemies. Oh, Donald Trump gets on the TV screen. Look what all kind of people say about him. Is that a godly thing to do? Yeah. Or what about old Biden when he gets on there? Is that a godly thing to do? Yeah. Rare and talking about him and drawing cartoons about him, making fun of him. You know what we ought to be doing? Right. We ought to be praying for him. Yeah. They're in a position. Thank God that if they could change something, it would be for the better. Amen. But if we give up on them, then may they will never change. That's something to think about, isn't it? There ain't a soul out there that God didn't reach out and touch. Nebuchadnezzar was a wicked man, but God came right down from heaven and gave him warning. Amen. He, he, he blessed him, thank God. He used him for the work that he had for him to do. Amen. And really, in a way, he's still being used because some of the things that God gave him that was interpreted to him, we're still using them in the Bible today. Amen. A wicked man that he was, but yet God 
and touch him. Touch him. And old Ahab was a wicked ruler too. But one time when God threatened him that he was going to kill his house, amen, he humbled himself down before God. And he began to repent. And God said that he was still going to bring the evil, but he'd bring it up on the days of his sons. He wouldn't bring it in his day because he humbled himself down. And people just humble themselves down. I tell you what, I'd like to see some of these people just humble themselves down before God and quit trying to please the people. Because you'll never please the keep people. I can't please all you. I wish I could. I wish I could just make everybody happy and feel so good, but I can't. Amen. I've got to obey God. Amen. I want to feel pleased myself. I want to feel God pleased with me. Amen. How many wants the Lord to be pleased with you? Like that song says, Is my Lord truly satisfied with me? Amen. I, I want Him to say, Enter thou in, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. I want to make it tonight. Amen. Don't you want to make it? I mean, it's kind of been a long time Bible study tonight, but it's just what I'm saying. You think about it. You compare this circumcision of the Jews. They was a religious sect there. They was the people of God, but yet their hearts wasn't right. Amen. That's why he said, break up your fallow ground and sow not among the thorns. And sow in the good ground. You know what? We need to sow our seed in good ground. If you come to church with no bad attitude, you've been having a hard time all day, you come to church, if you don't get rid of that, you won't get nothing. You won't get nothing out of service. I'll tell you something else, too. God forbid that if I quarrel and fight around my life all day and come to church and I couldn't overcome that spirit at home, I might get up here and do it up here. Something to think about, ain't it? That's why God wants us to wait up on it. Amen. Live right. Walk right. Talk right. Amen. Don't speak evil of no man. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Just pray for people. Even if they're wicked, just pray for them. Ask God to help them. You know, God can move mountains. One place he said, thank God, we heap coals of fire upon them if we just pray for them. Amen. And make them do what's right. But if we just let the church do what it wants to do, that's where, that's where the man of sin is being revealed tonight. The Bible said the man of sin is being revealed, the son of perdition. And people's looking for a man to rule the world. But children, if you look around, you can see the spirit taking over in people's lives. The same spirit that came in Judas Issachar, amen, he denied the Lord. He sold the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. The whole world is selling out tonight. They're selling Jesus for a whole lot less than 30 pieces of silver. People's trading things for their salvation. Just like Brother Bill was saying there, that's what they said about the, the Son of Man, about Judas, thank God. It had been better that he was never even born than to know what was right and not do it. It had been better if he'd never been born. Amen. And that would be the all of us, thank God. To know to do good, not to do it, we would really be in trouble. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Jeremy, you want to get a song? Amen to God. Hallelujah. I may just lift your hands up tonight and tell the Lord you love him. Amen. Oh, mighty God. We praise you tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, for your mercy. We love you without you, God, for nothing. We just ask you, God, to live in our midst, touch our lives. And we'll be what you have us to do. Amen. Hallelujah to God.